reinvoking Cold War era anti-Russian hysteria hasn't just been the Democratic Party's main method of attacking Donald Trump. It's also been a tactic employed by the media as well. And they do this because Russian uh, hysteria, it's sensationalistic and sensationalism sells and makes them money. Now, if you believe that Hillary Clinton lost because of Russia and not because she was a terrible candidate, then that implies that the Democratic Party has to do nothing. They need to make no changes, no adjustments. They don't have to change course whatsoever uh, because it wasn't their fault. Had it not been for Russia hacking into the emails of the DNC and John Podesta, then Hillary Clinton would have won. Now, let's forget about the fact that Democrats have been consistently losing. I mean, they lost the House in 2010, the Senate in 2014, and the White House in 2016. And also, they're wiped out at the state level. They're wiped out at the governor level. So, I mean... This allows them to not have any introspection whatsoever, so that's all a problem. But the main problem with this strategy is that it's actually influencing Donald Trump to take a demonstrably tougher stance towards Russia. And this comes at a time when tensions are already high, when we should be trying to normalize our relationship with Russia. But I mean, in spite of the obvious danger our politicians and the media are putting us in, by encouraging an unhinged madman to be tough on a nuclear power, well, even though Donald Trump just illegally and unconstitutionally bombed their ally, this story still doesn't seem to be losing any steam. And Rachel Maddow, a once respected progressive journalist, seems to be cashing in on this sensationalism the most. So The Intercept did a quantitative analysis of her recent coverage, and what they found out was absolutely stunning. The extent that Rachel Maddow covers Russia... Is all, we already know it's high, right? But what they found out will blow your mind. They explained The Intercept conducted a quantitative study of all 28 The Rachel Maddow Show episodes in the six-week period between February 20th and March 31st. Russia-focused segments accounted for 53% of these broadcasts. That figure is conservative, excluding segments where Russia was discussed but was not the overarching topic. In 16 of the 28 episodes analyzed, Russia comprised either all or a substantial part of the A block, the show's headlining and far lengthiest segment, which often amounts to nearly half the show, excluding commercials. Maddow's Russia coverage has dwarfed the time devoted to other top issues, including Trump's escalating crackdown on undocumented immigrants, 1.3% of coverage, Obamacare repeal, 3.8%, the legal battle over Trump's Muslim ban, 5.6%, a surge of anti-GOP activism and town hall since Trump took office, 5.8%, and Trump administration scandals and stumbles, 11%. Maddow's focus on Russia has helped her ratings, which are at their highest level since 2008. So out of a total of 1,191 minutes, 640 minutes, a majority of the time, has been dedicated to Russia. This includes focus on Russian oligarchs, Michael Flynn, and let me remind you that Rachel Maddow is the one that started the lie, and it is a lie, that Bernie Sanders supporters only disliked Hillary Clinton because they were subjected to Russian propaganda about Hillary Clinton and fake news. So we didn't dislike Hillary Clinton because of her policies, because we're really dumb. We only disliked Hillary Clinton uh, because we decided to read Macedonian clickbait websites that probably came from uh, the directive of the Kremlin uh, to do fake news about Hillary Clinton. She's the one that started this live. So she is getting a huge ratings boost because of this, but it comes at the expense of her pre credibility among progressives. Yep. The thing is that she doesn't care. You know, it, it's money over integrity if you're Rachel Maddow. Now, just to show how bombastic she's been and how outrageous her rhetoric has been, the Intercept also compiled a video segment that I have to show you. And here's the question. Is the new president going to take those troops out? In Russia. Russian. Russia. Russia. Russian. Russia. 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 Of whether or not Russia had help, whether they had Confederates inside the Trump campaign when they launched this attack. But every day, and every day I leave my show and I think I'm going to be talking about something else. But every day, over the course of the news cycle, a new piece of it falls in place. We're about to find out if the new president of our country is going to do what Russia wants. If the, the presidency is effectively a Russian op, right? If the American presidency right now is the product of collusion between the Russian intelligence services and an American campaign, I mean, that is so profoundly big. 
this is not part of American politics. This is not, you know, partisan warfare between Republicans and Democrats. This is international warfare against our country. She's using words like international warfare. Rachel Maddow is completely unhinged. She is showing us that if it makes money, she is willing to cover it. That's all she cares about, getting the ratings. And it, th I find this really disheartening because when you look at the Rachel Maddow Facebook page, for example, and the videos that she's posting, a lot of her so, uh, her supporters and viewers are cheering her on. They're saying, wow, you know, I, I, I've been such a fan of her throughout the course of her Russia coverage when she's trying to take any and everything about Russia and make it into a big story, even if there's no evidence. So she is deceiving her audience in order to get views and we know that she tries to do this because <laughs> this was made very clear when she hyped up the uh, trump tax return story and then it was nothing so rachel maddow is someone who we just can't trust and this is sad because she was one of the few pe people who i considered an ally in the mainstream media but we cannot trust rachel maddow she should be ashamed of herself she is not a progressive. She is not a progressive at all. What she's doing is incredibly harmful, and she is misleading the American people. Yep. Support this podcast by joining the independent progressive media revolution today at humanistreport.com.